Hello and welcome back to Movie Husbands. Today we'll be reviewing The Suicide Squad. Written and directed by James Gunn, The Suicide Squad is the much publicized reboot of the famous comic book collective. A group of misfit criminal supervillains band together to complete a search and destroy mission. It stars Margot Robbie, Idris Elba, Daniela Melquire, John Cena, and many more. So Matt, what did you think of The Suicide Squad? All right, so as we know, uh, this movie is a reboot of 2016 Suicide Squad by David Ayer. And, you know, this movie is definitely a much better outing <laughs> than that movie. One of my favorite things about this movie is the way he's able to subvert expectations in terms of the way that the plot moves. Um, this movie is very surprising at times. You think it's going in a certain direction and it just kind of cuts very harshly <laughs> into something else. I think it took a lot of things that would make a movie seem bad. This is going to seem really weird and I'm going to kind of get there and hopefully this is understandable. But basically in one of the opening scenes, I felt like we were being kind of thrown into this mission and I had no time to kind of relate to any of the characters or know their kind of uh, purpose or kind of the backstory. And I thought that was one of the main problems with the original Suicide Squad was that you were just kind of thrown into these characters and you weren't able to build like a relationship with them. And the way James Gunn introduced them that way and then completely subverted it by killing so many of them and then really in came and introduced the other characters that were going to be more prominent, I thought was just fantastic. Yeah, I like this movie. I, I think this was a lot of fun. James Gunn can kind of make you think he doesn't care about anything because there's just so much carnage everywhere. <laughs> there's just carnage, swearing, all of these people dying all over the place, all this dark humor. There's a great thing that I'm not going to give away that has to do with these kind of missionary soldiers that is like the funniest thing ever. Um, <laughs> Uh, but he is like such a heartfelt filmmaker. I think that a lot of what you probably hear about this movie is its dark humor and its carnage and its action. But to pair all of that with the heart it has, I think is probably the most remarkable thing about James Gunn and something he's been very successful at also in Gardens of the Galaxy. But I think the dichotomy is kind of more pronounced here. Yeah, because if you think about it, like none of these characters should be able to relate to each other. And somehow he kind of pulls off this kind of warm personal relationships within the trajectory of the movie. So, and it's something that's built throughout the movie. And I think it hits harder towards the end. So as the movie progresses, you feel deeper and deeper for these characters. Yeah, he made me care about a rat and a giant shark man. <laughs> So these characters, they have, they all have these great trajectories that you were kind of saying in your intro. He weaves them together so well. So all of these characters kind of have these quick moments where you get their backstories, but that somehow comes into fruition at the end, or it kind of weaves its way into the plot in an interesting way, in a way that like would annoy me in a worse movie, but this movie really lands it. I, I don't really know how it does that. Like I, there, there are certain things in this movie that would annoy me in other movies, but don't annoy me in this movie. James Gunn has a great way of taking something that would be so absurd and like it could, in, in a, any other movie, would come across like so cringy. Like when you see a giant starfish battling in a town, yeah. it would be the most idiotic, stupid thing in a movie. And for some reason, he plays that off so well. It's kind of like in Guardians of the Galaxy in the second one too, when... Quill becomes Pac-Man for that second. It's like, it's so absurd, but it bounces off the humor of knowing that it's absurd mm -hmm. and makes it work. Yeah, he's very um, postmodern. Like he's very self-aware. His films, I think, are very self-aware. They never try to be more than, you know, almost like a proudly lowest common denominator sort of filmmaking. Uh, I, I mean, he's much more than that, but like he's almost priding himself on being like the bottom of the barrel in a sense. Like he likes to take these these misfits, these forgotten kind of loners, almost in the way that like Tim Burton would in the 90s and make these kind of like sentimental films about them. But he seems really into that sort of archetype, but he makes us all kind of fall in love with those characters. This movie almost feels like he thinks he's never gonna make a movie again. Like every idea he's ever had needs to be <laughs> in this movie somehow. There are probably things I've already forgotten about in this movie that are hilarious ideas. Like, even that little weasel guy that I forgot about was <laughs> such, a, such, such a strange... What did they say in the uh, trailer? Horribly beautiful mind, something like that. No, he has a horribly beautiful mind. Because he's literally just going balls to the wall. He's like, if this is going to be it, that's it. Yeah, like, if you're giving me a couple hundred million to make an action movie, I'm going to have a giant shark guy eating people and a giant starfish. James Gunn was such a good choice for 
the Suicide Squad, not only for the kind of misfit themes that we've been talking about, but I think that James Gunn is one of the very few directors whose style has kind of permeated the Marvel machine, right? Guardians of the Galaxy felt like a very new thing, at least in the context of the Marvel Cinematic Universe when it came out. The same way that Taika Waititi kind of broke through and he made a film that's very Taika Waititi with Thor Ragnarok. It's just cool to see him do the same thing in DC when they need it the most. Yeah, and this was definitely the perfect franchise to give him, in a sense. Um, also, in terms of that, what to expect from James Gunn is fantastic music in a movie. So The needle drops. The needle drops, they're fantastic, and they fit perfectly into the style of this film and what it should be. And that's just another thing, is that this movie just, it's exactly what I wanted from a Suicide Squad movie. I think on another note, uh, the actors are really great in this movie. Mm -hmm. Margot Robbie as Haley Quinn is fantastic. Um, she has some awesome fight sequences in this movie. I think Idris Elba and as Bloodsport and um, Ratcatcher, you know, the relationship that they build throughout the movie is just so well done. And I think they're such great actors and they really, I think everybody in this movie really just did a fantastic job. John Cena, you know, you could, the list goes on. I think if I had to say a negative, I actually said this to you um, when I was, when we were coming out of Gardens of the Galaxy 2 when we saw it. And it was, it was, the, it was the exact moment of the Pac-Man that I thought this, where I had said, maybe this is too much of a good thing. Um, I think Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is a little bit too much of a good thing. I still like that movie. This movie like inches towards being too much of a good thing. It's almost like, I don't even know why I'm complaining, but there's a moment you know, here or there where I say, okay, James Gunn's just going like a bit overboard. I see what you mean. Yeah, I think for some reason that absurdity works for me. Mm -hmm. And it's because I find it's making so much of a joke of itself. Um, that it just, it lands with me. So I, I, but I could totally understand how somebody could watch that and just be like, this is a little too much for me. Yeah, and I think all of his jokes have that kind of self-conscious quality and that metafictional quality. But like doing that so continuously, I get mm. sometimes get okay. You know, I think by the time a James Gunn film comes around, I'm ready for it. But if he was pumping out like two movies a year, I would be really sick of it. It would get very tiring very quickly. So yeah, it's nice when it's like that special. It's kind of like uh, your birthday every year, and you're like, <laughs> get yeah. a present or eat some cake. It's like, it's yeah. kind of like that. I could be wrong on this. I don't think he's made a film since Guardians of the Galaxy two. No, yeah, he hasn't. Yeah, so I mean, that, it was a long time ago that we yeah. saw that movie. So I was ready for this by the time it came out. All right, so you ready to go to grades? Yeah, I gave it a B plus. I think it's way fun. It, I don't even know how to like intellectually just talk about this movie. I don't think you can. It's just a blast. It has heart. It's hilarious. It's over the top and just disgusting. It is like the goriest thing I've seen, but in all the funniest ways. Yeah, no, I completely agree with what you said there, especially with like how it's not really intellectual. It's a very kind of simple, fun, balls to the wall movie. It'll have you laughing, it'll have you smiling, it will, you know, give you a little bit of that like feels in your heart. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I give this movie an A minus. So um, pretty much right there with you. I, I really enjoyed this film. All right, and that's it for our review of The Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad is now in theaters and streaming on HBO Max. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this review. Let us know in the comments, what did you think of The Suicide Squad? And we'll see you next time.